Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. My name is Rosa DeFlorio, and it's an honor and a privilege to do this for the B team tonight. As a mother of five boys, I know the sacrifices that the parents and the coaches do on a daily basis. And it's great, and it takes team and effort. Congratulations, and congratulations also to the parents and the coaches. I'm going to... I'm going to invite uh, Dennis Wil Wilcox here. He's the head coach, and he will give everybody their recognition because he, with all the hard work that he has done to bring this team here, he deserves to be recognized also. Thank you. Good evening. I had to write this down because I forget what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long season. Um, we started the season one and three in last place. And uh, we lost a couple of tough games. And then uh, we finished four and four, got the last seed into the playoffs. Um, and then we just turned it up a notch and um, we got better as the year went on. That's what Papuano football is all about, making kids better in the fundamentals. And our first playoff game was against East Lynn. We beat them 38 to 8. Our second playoff game, we were avenging a regular season loss. We lost 20 to 7 in the regular season to Dorchester. We beat them in the playoffs 33 to 6. And the third game was for the Eastern Mass Championship. We lost to them in the regular season 13 to 12. And we won the Eastern Mass Championship, beating them 14 to six. And uh, the the final game for the states, which Brian and the organization, we were we were the host. Uh, Eastern Mass was the host team this year, host uh, organization this year. We got to play for the state championship at Everett Stadium. We played the Boston Raiders and we blanked them 30 to nothing. And um, it was just a great team effort. Then we went on to the New England Championship. And uh, we don't want to talk about what happened that day, but uh, <coughs> we fell a little short to Edgewood, Rhode Island. But um, I just want to say thank you to Brian Diamond, who's in the back there, who's up, who through the years, we didn't always see eye to eye. We do now, thank God. But um, he's always given me everything I ever needed to, to you know, make the team better. And, um, you know, uh, my assistants, John Rush, Carol Manuel, Chris Carabino, who couldn't be here, Victor Ruiz, who's not here either, Joey White, who's not here, and Danielle. And thank you to my wife, Kelly, for dealing with me, because I'm not very easy to deal with during football season. And the number one thank you goes to Lisa Marushi for, sta <laughs> for standing on the other sideline and making sure all the kids got their plays, the opposite sideline. And thank you to uh, Councilwoman DeFlorio for helping us out to get us up here and recognize that these kids won a state championship. Thank you. Uh, before I have the mayor come up to say a few words, I'm going to introduce my colleagues. Uh, Council President John Heelan, uh, Councilor Fred Capone, Councilor Anthony DePiero, Councilor Mike Mangan, Councilor Richie Delasola, and Councilor uh, Leo McKinnon, I'm sorry, and Councilor uh, Mike McLaughlin. This is what we do every day. We work on a team to bring Everett forward. Thank you. Thank you very much for making us proud. Mayor Carla De Maria. Well, uh, Dennis, um, we want to thank you uh, for your uh, tremendous leadership on the field. Um, I was unable to uh, see some of the games this year. What happened was once you won that title game, I said to myself, I go to the next game, they lose. I'm the bad luck guy, you know? So uh, I had Anthony down there give me play-by-play, -play, and I know Council Mangan went down and Council Della Sola tell me what was going on. Uh, so uh, I'm very proud of you boys for your, for your efforts and what you did. 
as a team, especially uh, coming back from, uh, you know, having a, you know, a tough uh, beginning and then beating these teams and when, when it really mattered. Uh, that just shows uh, that you really, uh, you're, you're all engines were firing and that you were really starting to come together as a team and, and listening to your coaches and understanding the plays. And because uh, life isn't easy, you don't get sometimes, um, it doesn't really come naturally. You have to work and work and work. And you prove that working hard and going to practice every day and putting the time in and, and, and probably going home and, you know, rehearsing the plays in your head and making sure that you knew your, jo your job. Um, and, and what, you know, what block you had to make, you know, it's not all the running backs and the quarterbacks also. It's also the, the guys up front that make those blocks that open up those holes and the guys are on defense that contain the offense. So, I mean, there's so many, so many people. It's a team, a team sport and you should be all very proud of yourselves uh, to, be win to be state champions, uh, to represent the city here. Uh, you know, we're all very proud of you. Um, I know your parents are proud of you and your coaches are very proud of you. And I'm just, uh, again, happy to be here to, uh, uh, to offer some citations from the city of Everett. I want to thank Councilor DeFlorio for uh, recognizing uh, the B team and making sure that they had their, their, their due uh, um, here at City Hall. I apologize that I didn't bring you up, um, but I'm glad Rosa did and I'm glad Rosa invited me to, to, uh, to say a few words. And I do have a citation for, for the boys. Uh, you know, if Dennis, if you would join me up here, I'll, I will um, read yours first and then we can bring you boys up together. Is that all right? So uh, Coach Dennis Wilcox, where is he? Coach uh, Joey White here, John Rush, Victor. Uh, Coach John Lambeau is not here. Oh yeah, John Lambeau is here. He's still here? You still allow him on the roster? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of coaches on this team, right? Yeah. So Dennis, um, I've seen you in action. <laughs> Seeing you on, uh, on on your Facebook pages, I've seen you coach uh, uh, your, your your other son's team when you went down to Florida and won it all the year before, right? Uh, the national champions. I went to a few of those games. Some of those cold that cold game, and I don't know where we were. Somewhere uh, was a far ride in Worcester. Was that in Worcester? Um, I see the, you 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 the boys listen to you. You know you've had some tough days as a young man growing up and what you accomplished yourself and what you, what you do for other people in this community that maybe people don't realize, not just kids, but what you, the support that you offer to people in my own family. Um, you're just a, a true gentleman. Um, guys like me look at you and we, we, we're, we, we appreciate what you do and we respect you. I know a lot of people love you and uh, um, I do. Um, and I, I get, so the citations from the city, and it's just something that be here known to all as on the mayor, Mayor Kyle Demiroff, my most serious congratulations to Dennis, head coach Dennis Wilcox, and your recognition of your dedication and your hard work. <laughs> resulting in your being the 2015 Eastern Mass and state champions. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your citation. All right. Bring the other coaches up that are here? Yeah. Joey White's not here, you said? Joey, no. Coach John Rush, I see John. Yeah. John? Is there one here for Dana? I mean, Kyle? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I've, John, not only does he coach football, but he coaches baseball. I see him at all the fields with all the kids. I don't even think you have kids in the system. I think you maybe have grandchildren now in the system. Or am I even wrong? No, no family member. No family member. You, and how many years have you been pot coaching and throughout the city of Everett? Seven years now. Seven years now. So, John, just a little citation from the city of Everett. Just want to congratulate you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for everything you do for Appreciate our city. It. You're welcome. Appreciate Danielle? Coach, stay here with us. Uh, this citation is for uh, Coach Danielle Nadu. Danielle? And I know Danielle's been part of the organization for many years. I think she was there when my son played on the uh, E-team. So Danielle, and I think you started off by doing uh, uh, whatever it was, the so plays. Good. You're still doing that same thing? Well, you do a great job doing that, so congratulations. Thank you for everything you do for the team. Appreciate it. Coach Carolyn Manuel. Carolyn, the same goes to you. I know you not only do this with the little kids, you do it with the high school. 
I see your passion on the football field, and I want to thank you for all you do for the kids of Everett. Chris is not here? All right. I'll take the one to him. Johnny's not here either. Johnny's not here? The two favorite guys, Chris and Johnny, aren't here? Yeah, exactly. They must have not known I was giving citations out. <laughs> My buddy Joey White. All right. These are the kids? Oh, the team mom. See, where is she? Team mom Kelly Wilcox. We have two team moms. Kelly? <laughs> Kelly is looking at me like she wasn't the team mom, but uh, I, I, we know that we know we'll get her up here, but we're not going to give it a mic either. But uh, Kelly, um, raising two fine boys in the city, and I know you're the uh, brains behind the operation because I know my, I know my, I know my wife is. So on behalf of the entire city, ever thank you for everything you do, Kelly. Yeah. I hope she doesn't smoke cigarettes in the football field. No, right? She's, no, she goes around the corner. She goes around the corner and stuff. <laughs> She's a wonderful friend. Grew up with her in high school and uh, uh, just a great all-around all person. Uh, team mom, Lisa Mareshi. Kids, all right, yes. This is Coach Victor Ruiz. Is Victor here? No, no Victor's not here either. All right, point <laughs> sleeper. All right. So I'm going to read one of these citations, and boys, it's, it's basically the same thing. It says, uh, uh, the mayor offered my most sincere congratulations to the first man boy, is CJ Surratt. <laughs> CJ here? <laughs> CJ, come on up. Are you here? Yeah, come on up, CJ. We'll do this quick. Give me the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tavon Bradley. Good job, good job. Yeah, boys, stay up here, right up. Boys, we're going to take yeah. a picture with all the members of the city council. You can just come right here. Risab Barty. That's a tough one. Brandon Panetta. Here's Brandon Panetta. Here he is. There you go. Don't throw up there. Good job, Tom. You're welcome. David Menninger. Robert Lemontaine. <laughs> K.O. Rodriguez. <laughs> Daviel Cora. Daviel's not here. Jeff Delgado. Not here. Stervins and Toy. Uh, and Antoine. Stervins. You know, growing up was all Italian and Irish kids. It was so easy for me. <laughs> Ralph Carboni. Ali Fountain. Cam Scott. You happy? Bernard Platel. 
No. No, Bernard? Zach Maitri. Maitri. Yeah. Maitri. Kamari Ellerby, 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 Ellerby. There you go. That's an easy one, yes. Brandon Gibbs. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. David C uh, Chifuentes. <laughs> Mikey Stanton. Coach. Stavan Delgado. <laughs> Stavan not here? Not here. Josh Baldwin. Zero Carboni. <laughs> Max Schellingford. Max not here. Shay Wilcox. Takes after his mother. <laughs> well, actually, he does take after you. The other one takes after the mother. Lens Altenor. Well, that's kind of hair I want, Lens, just like that. <laughs> Tyrese Baptiste. Did I miss anybody? Uh, Victor. Victor. Where's Victor's citation? Is that Victor? You got Victor's over there? Victor, take, it only takes two seconds, so we'll make you a nice special one out in the office and I'll sign it for you. Victor Fernandes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 Eastern Massachusetts and State Champions. Now, if I can get the uh, members of the City Council to join me in taking a picture with these fine young men. Fine young men, yeah. Remember these nice days being young. We gonna do it. We, we, uh, who wants to line us up? Andrew, you wanna, you wanna do some cheers in front or something or? Why don't we put this first row in cheers? Put this first row in cheers. Yeah. Wait, can we do that? No. Uh, this is why we need a new city hall, so we can take better pictures. <laughs> we can, we can have a staircase somewhere. The great, like in the great hall of the Yeah, exactly. We need a great hall. <laughs> Everyone front down on the one knee or something, maybe. 
three point stance? The guy's taking a photo from the line of sight. We good here? Or, uh, how we looking? Hey, we got the wrong guy in front of me here. Yeah. Maybe if you got if you guys got on top of the desk and took it coming down a little. Yeah. Get on top of the desk. Yeah. And then come come an angle coming down. Get the cameras up. insurance for you.
going on? Right. Where was that? I couldn't shake his hand. Okay. All right. Oh, nice to meet you. Pleasure to Good guy. Okay, set. Yeah. Clerk of Color Roll, please. <coughs> Councilor Capone. Here. Councilor Della Sola. Here. Councilor DeFlorio. Here. Councilor DePiro. Here. Councilor Mangan. Here. Councilor Matuski. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Palatano. Absent. Councilor Simonelli. <laughs> Councilor Hanley. Here. Ten members present, Mr. President. The audience, please rise and uh, join the council in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we uh, begin, I'm going to ask for a moment of silence and everybody to stand, but before we do that, I just want to introduce uh, Shane um, Simonelli, who's sitting at the end there, who will be Steve's voice for a few weeks, and also that Ella O'Donnell, who is the uh, daughter of Dennis O'Donnell, our police officer, she's hospitalized and very ill, and Madeline Bagonzi, who passed away on Saturday, Sunday, and she was a teacher at the Whittier School, so please stand. Uh, well, thanks everyone for uh, having me here and uh, let me help out my uncle. Uh, my name is Shane Simonelli. Um, I'm going to be just dictating what he had said to me as far as how he's going to vote on each issue. Um, and I thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Public participation. Okay, yeah. Okay. Rosa, do you have any public participation? Uh, I have a motion to, are we going to op yes. read it? Yeah, open, open public. Open public participation. Yeah. Motion made and second to open public participation. All in favor signify aye. by saying aye. All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Rose, uh, is anyone? I have a, a Laura Chubacco. Is Laura in the audience? I hope Laura? I pronounced that right. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Would you please come forward? <coughs> My name's Laura Shivako. I live at 520 Ferry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Laura Shivako from 520 Ferry Street in Everett, of course. I'm here to complain about the excessive noise due to construction from 7 p.m. to 7 in the morning, or as it was today, they started at 1 with a different company and five trucks vibrating the whole house and neighborhood. <laughs> so then it'll start again at 7 and it'll just go around the clock. I don't know how you think blue collar workers are going to get any sleep to go to work the next day or be able to function without being stressed. I don't think that was taken into any kind of consideration. The way Everett's Everett set up, there's plenty of blocks that you can reroute traffic down a couple blocks and up around. It's very accessible. I don't see why you had to do this at night. I think it's terrible. It's a disgrace. That's what I came to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor DeFlorio, anyone else? I, I remember. Close public participation. Motion made and second to close public appearing, uh, uh, participation. Before that, is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to say anything to the council on any subject matter whatsoever? Yes. yes. Hi. Hi, my name is Donna Sachetta Davidson. I live on Springville Avenue. And we've noticed recently, especially, since 12-9, December 9th, there have been seven incidents of, that I know of, 
of um, people coming into our yards and our driveways and, and into our cars. And um, I, I did purchase some cameras, and I do have a lot of them on film. And, and the police have been aware of some of these because personally, my, I was affected. My daughter's laptop was stolen. And um, we've noticed it's become epidemic. I, I really think it goes on every night. It's just I only look when somebody calls me to say, Donna, check your cameras because everything was taken out of my car last night. And sometimes I can catch it on film. And uh, especially since usually they do try every car in the neighborhood. So they come in your driveway. And um, you know, recently, the last incident was 124. Oh, actually, last night, uh, Saturday night, Jefferson Ave. On the 19th, people from Madison Ave called me. And there were two men out. They took a little girl's back, backpack and then were running through all our yards, emptied everything out in her backyard, and um, continued to ransack different cars around the neighborhood. Parkview Ave, I've gotten private Facebook messages from people I don't even know, but they've seen some of my pictures that I've put up. I'm getting um, more than a few private messages from neighbors in, in, the, in the area, Jefferson, Madison, Springville, Parkview, um, Richdale. Everybody in this neighborhood seems to be affected now, and it's epidemic. Um, I know it probably revolves around the drug epidemic, too, of course, which somewhere along the line, higher up, maybe we could educate people about this because, I mean, it is a disease. I understand that. But it's affecting us hardworking people. And um, it's scary because I see them carrying some kind of metal object, and it has a point on it. I think it's something to smash your windshields or your glass or whatever. I thought it was a gun at first, but I'm sure maybe it's, it could be <laughs> that, too. But, uh, you know, one of my own neighbors I caught on film stealing from my car. So we're very concerned because it's not happening just once in a blue moon now. It's probably every night. I've got seven incidents right here just starting on December 9th up until the 24th of this, uh, this weekend. And I'm hoping that we can get more police patrols um, you know, not only that, but we're finding hypothermic needles all over the place. I mean, it's just getting to the point where it's affecting all of us, even us who don't use. You know, we sympathize with them, but they're stealing from us, and it's dangerous. It's getting very dangerous. There was just a robbery on Broadway today, right in broad daylight. People trying to pry open your back cell basement doors if you don't answer the front door. It's becoming really bad. And I can tell you, scanning my cameras, which takes a lot of time, it's very time consuming, I've never seen one police car from, from midnight to 7 in the morning, not one patrolling police car. So I'm hoping that we can step up the police patrol at night and maybe, um, you know, they should be not just driving by, but going slow, looking in driveways, because that's where they are. They're in our driveways and in our backyards. And that's my concern. Right, th thank you. Uh, I'm not allowed to debate with the person I know who this. came up, but I, I want to let you know that item 28 on our calendar has something to do with that matter. So maybe the sponsors might move to have that brought up earlier so that you'd be able to sit. So don't leave right away. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak thank before you. the council? Hearing none, on the motion to close the uh, public participation, all in favor? All opposed, so moved. Make a motion to suspend the rules. Take item 28 off second. the agenda, please. Oh, what a surprise. Uh, second. Second motion. The motion made and second to add item 28 out of order. Uh, on the motion, I would like to uh, <coughs> uh, ask a, a council to appear to speak first. We have to read it. Item number 28, resolution sponsored by council is Anthony Capera, Richard Della Solo, Mike McLaughlin, the other community television. Consider running a message board alerting residents of a number of recent car break-ins specifically in the Springville area, so residents can be aware and take precautions. Council? Uh, thank you for coming up and speaking with us, Donna. I've been in touch um, with Donna over the past week or so about uh, the incidents going on, and uh, it is concerning. I asked um, this piece to be put on so the residents in the area know what's going on so they can be alerted and take precaution. 
It's simple things, you know, don't leave valuables in your car, lock them up, but they can still break the windows, we all know that. So I just want the neighbors in her area to be aware. And I have been in talks with the police chief. They are going to be working on stepping up patrols in the area. And they have been looking at the footage, and they were given an address with some, with some problem individuals, and they're pretty sure they know who they are, and you know, they're responsible for this. So hopefully some action gets taken in the near future. Um, Councilor Bellasola. I have the same concerns as my colleagues here. This is something that if we could have the patrol, like we said, step it up in the area, I'm kind of shocked that on, on the video there's no signs of police at all going by there. All the times that this has been happening. If we could have even undercover cars just drive up and down the street because if they see the crews are coming down, you know, they're going to run and hide. If an uh, undercover car comes down the street, even I know it's winter time, but a foot patrol. It seems to be happening, so people at home, at home know, usually one in the morning to about four in the morning is when this is happening. So we all have the same concerns, and hopefully, uh, and I'm sure our, our police chief will step up patrol in that area. Thank you. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. I also, uh, not to um, repeat my colleagues, but I also am very concerned about this issue. I'm concerned because it is off of a main road, Elm Street. So if we're not paying attention really to that neighborhood, what else is going on that we don't know about in this community as far as these types of events happening overnight? It's, uh, it's something that needs to come to a head. It's not something that I agree with Council DePiero to put some notice on ECTV to be able to notify residents, but there are some questions that I've come up that I've thought of that I'd like to address with the, our chief of police. So I think this is a bigger issue than just referring this to ECTV and asking them to be able to put this forward for PSA. I think that we need to have uh, chief of police or somebody before us to talk about um, this issue. I think we need to, like Councilor Della Sola said, do some foot patrols in that neighborhood, have some of our police officers uh, walk that beat. It's right down the street from the police station, which is another issue. If it's on the same street that our police station's on and it's happening, it's really a concern to me. So I, I'd like to ask that uh, we do send this to ECTV, but to also refer this to public safety, public service and government operations so that we can invite up chief of police or somebody from the police department to talk about beats, talk about how often they do go up and down the streets, how often are they in the neighborhood, can they do something more to be able to be more visible in the neighborhood for residents. It, it, I live on the other side of the city, but I'm as concerned about that as if it was in my own neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Simonelli. Um, so, Councilor Simonelli uh, would also like to talk about reverse 911 uh, and how it would be quicker and more direct. Um, reverse 911 is sometimes used for the wrong reasons um, and is, it should be used for emergencies and public safety issues. Um, and he not for any sort of entertainment or political uses. Uh, he would like to amend the motion by adding reverse 911. Uh, a motion would be amended by adding reverse 911. Second the motion. Uh, Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I was going to uh, second sending this to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, as you may recall, I was talking about some, not an actual break in in the area, but we were talking about increased police uh, visibility across the city. Just our last meeting, I put a piece on and we've collectively referred it over to Public Safety, which talked about increasing uh, foot patrol, possibly bike patrol, more visibility across the entire city because you look around and we keep making the news for the wrong reasons. So we're doing the best we can, but we need to step up visibility. We need to have our residents feel safe and we need to uh, be able to provide that for our residents. So I would second sending this to public safety. It'll be with the other piece. The chief will already be here and we can ask him all the questions. Council DeFlorio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do agree with uh, Councilor Capone that we do need the whole city because if you move them from one street, they go to another. So this has to be something that has <coughs> to be citywide. It's just not one area. So I, I, I would agree with that. Thank you. Councilor Kennedy. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Anyone else? Councilor DePiro. If we are going to invite the chief up to come before our committee, I would like to request that the crime analyst also be present. Who? Absolutely. The crime analyst. <coughs> All right. Um, <coughs> I understand you want to refer this to the community t as a community television. Um, I need someone to talk to them to say exactly what they want to appear. Would that be you? Is that your assignment? And next, I need. I know that Michael, you asked for the police department to be here. I need to know what exact questions you want to ask them. 
This is according to our rules sure. now, and I want to try to enforce those rules, okay? Sure. As I did on some pieces that I referred two weeks ago, I will do the same tonight and submit some questions in a generalized subject because I don't think that we can really get down to, to the nitty-gritty of this uh, in writing. I think this is going to be a, de a developing conversation, but I will put an outline forward that this grips some of my questions. We need questions to ask. We can't just say general questions, so you need to ask something. Absolutely, and I'll put an outline forward that broadens the issue, but it's not going to be the specific questions because I think this is a developing conversation that needs to occur, Mr. President. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other? Uh, yes, Michael. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I mean, I know we have a second for Council Simonelli's thing, but I think that's a great idea also because there are a lot of people here that have like direct TV and other things like that that don't have our cable, so they don't have access to that. Uh, ECTV, plus you know some people just don't have cable at mm -hmm. all or, or, or any of that stuff. Um, so I think that's the greatest thing you can effectively reach people is the reverse 911. So I wholeheartedly uh, support his okay. decision. And and Councilor Simonelli. A motion to amend. To add reverse 911 to uh, okay, we got that. Okay, and also to uh, reverse 911 and notify people in that. You want to do citywide notification? <coughs> citywide, yeah. citywide notification of uh, recent car breaks, etc. Anything else uh, on those motions? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. The motion so carries. That went to the committee on government operations. Make a motion okay. to suspend the rules and take items number 19 and 20 collectively. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't, motion to take items 19 and 20. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, yes. clerk will write and read item number 19. Item 19 is a resolution sponsored by Council Rosa de Florio and Council Michael J. McLaughlin to invite a member of the City Engineering Department to discuss work being done on Linden Street by our Public Works. And item 20 is a resolution sponsored by Council Michael J. McLaughlin and Council John Leo McKinney to have a representative from the National Grid come to speak regarding work done on Ferry Street. Okay. We'll take item number 19 first, Councilor. If, if we could have the uh, City Engineer and uh, the Jeffrey Navarro, uh, Department of Public Works. Please identify yourself, gentlemen. Jerry Navarro, DPW Director. Bill O'Rourke, Director of Engineering. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to the um, sidewalks on Linden Street, I believe I've seen them already filled in at this time? It's currently filled in, correct. They're currently filled in. Now, would, um, so they seem pretty solid to me, not that I'm an expert, but they seem pretty They're solid. Safe. They are safe. So you can, you're able to, now that we had the snowstorm, you're able to plow and keep up with them yes. until the spring. Okay. And um, I know we had been working on this is issue for quite a while, and unfortunately things didn't go as planned. That's why we got a late start. Correct. To begin with, because we had a problem of the uh, poles and electric poles and so on. Is that correct? That's just correct. Okay. Thank you, and thank you for the work. Thank you. Questions about Leonard Street, Michael? Thanks, um, uh, Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, gentlemen. I have submitted questions for tonight's meeting. Um, I don't know how you want to proceed with going forward with these list of questions that I've asked, Mr. President, but they have received the questions, and I don't know if you want to go one by one on these questions or how you would like to uh, begin this, this dialogue. Uh, your questions, I'll stop if we have to stop, okay? Okay, sure, no problem at all. So as both of you guys have received the questions, I see it in front of Ms. Navarro. Can either the city engineer or DPW director explain the actual scope of work, explain what we're doing there on Linden Street for the residents at home? We were planning to widen the street out due to, I left you all a packet there uh, regarding all the motor vehicle accidents that have occurred in the last two years in that block range. 
As we all know, it's, it's a very narrow path for two-way travel. So my intentions were to pull back the utility poles to widen out the street, which we've gained about eight feet in width. Uh, uh, obviously, it didn't pan out the way I wanted to do. Some things got lagged behind. National Grid did a great job. There were some issues with getting Comcast and Verizon out there to transfer the lines from the old line to the new line. Comcast came out there. There was a little bit of a scheduling issue with Verizon, which then we ran into the cold weather. And I respect that, Mr. Uh, Navarro. My question is, was this talked about in early beginning of the summer? There was some dialogue about this problem. There was dialogue. So correct. it took from beginning of the summer until almost the first week of December to be able to get the utilities moved off of the poles? Yes. That's uh, the talk for them to not respond to you guys' request in a, in a more timely fashion and more timely well, manner. Well, they had a uh, pretty busy summer and fall. There's some microbursts. I don't know if you heard about them during the summertime that they had to attend to. There was uh, more, more precedent to take care of first before they got to us. We had to send, uh, get approval by you guys as well. You guys wanted summer break as, in, in conjunction with that as well. So. And, and I apologize. I didn't hear about that. I was actually in, in the hospital for most of the summer, so I actually didn't know that those, those types of events had occurred. So. I apologize. Uh, who, who? So we have a delay, June to December. Who makes the decision on the first week of December that we're going to go out and rip up? I'll take full responsibility. Two hundred feet of linear square feet of. I'll take full responsibility. So for you that. made the decision to go Correct. forward with them. Right. Do Do you think that that was maybe something that we jumped the gun on because, as we've seen on Saturday, we they said we're going to get an inch of snow. We ended up getting five inches of snow. Right, so it can change in the in the matter of a few hours. Right. A, a circumstance can well change the weather. That. So that that was a concern to me that we would go the first week of December and, and start a project of that magnitude and neighborhood that is so if important. If Verizon met their uh, their end of their agreement along with National Grid and Comcast, we wouldn't be talking about this topic at all. Yep. But should, could we have waited until the spring to be I able wanted, to? Go I wanted this to forward? get done before the winter, just in case we had another winter upon us like last year. That was my main concern: safety. Okay. And and where we have the ability in house to be able to do a project of this magnitude, we shouldn't have maybe looked at going outside and out trying to save the city money by doing a lot more work in house. But we have the manpower that is we equipped to be able to do this Absolutely. much sidewalk. Absolutely. Okay. What what's a long term? Again, what's the long-term ratification for this area? Sa safety. It's safety. Okay. When, when do you plan that this is going to be completed? Beginning of the spring, probably late March, early April. Is there any drainage work going on on Linden Street As with right this now, project? No. There's no drainage work. Okay. And w again, we're so we have this area barricaded off on Linden Street Correct. currently. There's about eight spots we took up. Eight spots again. Mm -hmm. So where are those eight residents? We've accommodated a, by outlining parking lot spots <coughs> in the high school lot, and we've concurred with the police department and the, and the fire department to make sure we can get our uh, emergency trailers in and out of there, making the swing, and we outlined it, detailed, notified the residents with a memo, advised them what they need to do, put the proper signage, put two additional crosswalks there, notifying the residents they can't use that sidewalk, just go to the other side and utilize that crosswalk with signage as well. So I think we covered all our bases. And we've given enough parking in the, par in yes, the high school parking lot? Ten. For visitor parking, so we're at eight. So if everybody has a visitor over on a Saturday night, we don't have 16 spots. They we don't have 16 spots they anyhow, been so I agree spots, with you. I understand, so absolutely. Correct. So those were the questions I put forward on this project. I'm gonna continue to pay attention to make sure that this gets resolved in the early part of spring. I think it's a great idea. I think that wider and Linden Street can only benefit the neighborhood. I just, the timing is concerning to me because we did it the first week of December. But I understand. The, the gist is a great idea and it's gonna only benefit benefit the neighborhood, but some of the residents had called me. That's why I wanted to get the questions out so that they knew what was going on in their neighborhood. Thank you. Totally understand. Any further questions? Hearing none, excuse that the customary thanks. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. <coughs> the motion to, oh, what are we gonna do with this? Uh, make a motion to refer this item back to sponsor. Item 19, that is? Yes. Item 19, back to sponsor. Uh, all in, in favor of referring item 19 back to sponsor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, item 20. Make a motion to, oh, for item number 20 is next, right? Yeah, you asked that also. You asked the 19 and 20. 
Uh, item number 20, resolution sponsored by Council Michael J. McLaughlin, Council John Lee McKinney, to have representative from National Grid come to speak regarding work being done on Ferris Street. Make a motion to invite uh, the gentleman from National Grid, Dan Cameron, and Matthew, I can't read the name, I'm sorry. Carmody. Carm Carmody. 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 Present. Gentlemen, if you would, into the microphone, please introduce yourself. I'm Dan Cameron uh, with National Grid at offices at uh, 170 Medford Street in Malden. Is the president on the motion? Wait, wait. Sure, sorry. And I'm Matthew Carmody, National Grid project manager out of the 170 Medford office. Councilman uh, McLaughlin. I'd also, I, I'd also like to invite up the city engineer, Mr. O'Rourke, again, to be able to answer some of these questions with us. McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. On the, on the motion again, I submitted questions as I was directed to do um, so. I don't know if we want to again go through the questions that were asked because I believe you guys have received the questions, or I hope you have received the questions, Mr. Cameron. Um, so, Ruff, you have received the questions, correct? I received the questions. For, for this. So, if you want to go through this and again have the same open dialogue, Mr. President, as we did with the previous piece. Right ahead. Uh, Mr. Cameron or Mr. Ruff, can one of you guys give an overall breakdown of what is going on on Ferry Street. We've seen a resident here tonight that's very concerned about the issue, being negatively impacted. She has an elderly mother. She, they had called me um, about 10 days ago or so and brought this to my attention, what was going on. And numerous amounts of other residents have called me since going forward, include, and also Council McKinnon has been given uh, many phone calls regarding this project. Um, I will start off by saying that Mr. Comedy has been tremendous. I've spoken with him several times over the phone. Uh, he has been great to work with, and I, I thank you, Mr. Cameron, to uh, having him here in the city on this project, but there are some serious concerns that I have regarding this project. Okay, I'm gonna defer this, or I'll turn this over to Matt in, in a minute, but uh, in general, uh, as you know, we supply both the gas and the electric uh, distribution to the city of Everett, and with that, we are um, upgrading the system on Ferry Street from Chelsea Street all the way up to the Malden Line. Um, <clears throat> placing uh, mains in the street, and uh, it's ahead of the reconstruction that, that I, we think is planned under the DOT project for Ferry Street. So for more particulars, I'm gonna uh, turn this over to Matt Comedy, who is our construction supervisor and, and is running the job uh, on a daily basis for National Grid. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, um, so we started, we, this project was planned and designed in collaboration with the city on their full depth roadway, <coughs> roadway reconstruction that they had planned in about a year and a half on Ferry Street. We do this on multiple streets, so that way our older gas mains that are leak prone pipe uh, and our proactive main replacement service program is ahead of schedule. This way once the roadway is completed, paved, there will be no issues on our end from any of our pipelines. We won't be digging it up the next day and everything is done at the end of the work. So again, can just the hours of operation, sort of what's going on out there, how many blocks are we getting done or not, you know, because we're doing this in sections, correct, to try to move people down Ferry Street. Uh, just an overall of what's going on here in the city um, uh, with this project, if you could, Mr. Comedy. So all this was reviewed and approved under pre-construction pre meetings. We are currently working from 7 a.m. till about 5 a.m. We hopefully, we plan to be done at three. Uh, we work in these hours for public safety due to high traffic volume and also to overall to expedite the project. The, the way the project is working, I don't think it'd be fe as feasible to work this project during the day due to both lanes need to be shut down on Ferry Street. A concern is residents walking on the sidewalks, managing traffic, along with just the overall congestion. I've broken this project down with three separate crews, one starting at every loc at three locations in a three-phase project, as I like to say. One is to have started at the Malden Line one at Broadway, and one right just past Pleasant View Ave. This is to expedite the project, bringing multiple crews in to get the main in as soon as possible. Working at this time, I know it's not, you know, the best overall in terms of noise complaints and so forth, but it's for the best for the community, to expedite the work, the work be done safely, and for all parties involved. Would you please restate your hours that you mentioned in the first, when you first started? It's usually seven to three is what we were planning to work. Sometimes it's delayed. Seven what? Seven to five. Seven p.m. to five a.m. at the latest. That way we don't we don't block any traffic. Correct. I have a question. Yeah. 
question for Mr. O'Rourke. Mr. O'Rourke, is this gas work leading into any additional projects on the Yes, the city is currently uh, redesigning Ferry Street from the Revere Beach Parkway to the Malden <coughs> line, and we're going to be undertaking this work. We're at 25% um, design plans right now. We hope to have uh, 75 and 100% design plans for the next six months. Uh, we'll be bidding the project, and we'll be on our way to reconstructing Ferry Street. Because we got a grant right from the state. Is that is that why this is work is all sort of being done? Because we got a, a grant from the state for nine million dollars. So I'm not up to speed as much as you'd like me to be. I haven't worked on this project as much as uh, city engineer Julius Ofuri. He is more familiar with the project. He's been working with World Tech. World Tech is currently designing this project for us. Yes, uh, funding is involved uh, from the state DOT. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if. You're, Again, when are we hoping to have the next phase of the project? So I, I guess that's not really, are we gonna try to piggyback off of the gas to be able to kind of redo the uh, next phase? So that this doesn't get done, we re-hot top it, and then we go out and do the next phase. Is this gonna kind of go one hand in after another on this? Because uh, you said <coughs> we're 25% on the construction design right now for the next phase, right, correct? Right, right. Uh, I came on board with the city in August. I wasn't familiar with all these construction pro construction projects and so on, but typically the way construction works, the city, the city shows intent to reconstruct a street. And in that notification, we let the utilities know uh, what we intend to do, and they take it upon themselves to look at their utilities and determine uh, what is the condition of the utilities in the street. I imagine National Grid did that. They have cast iron lines in the street, and it was an opportunity for them to jump in front of us, what utilities typically do, they jump in front, they do the utility work, they upgrade them over to HDPE, what they're required to do, so the pipes no longer leak, they get their work done, and then we come in with our work and reconstruct the street so that there will be no um, unsightly utility patches uh, showing up in the street. Again, I'm just gonna run down the questions that I've asked because you, you've already seen the questions, so I'm just gonna go question by question at this point. So. Uh, what what is the rough estimate cost of the next phase of this project? What so I'm just trying because again I spoke with the mayor. He said we had a nine million dollar grant. Are we going to be able to spend the whole nine million dollar grant on on this project? I know this street lighting involved. There's a lot of things that are involved in this project. It's not just the gas work. So that's why I'm just trying to see where we are phase by phase to be able to make sure that we're going to. I believe we'll be spending all that nine million dollars. We're hoping to add additional linear footage of work uh, and up uh, past the new high school Elm Street. Uh, we haven't quite uh, determined the lengths, but it depends on the construction cost to do that and how much we can do. And who's designing, who's the designer of the next phase of this project? World Tech. World Tech. Engineering, correct. Okay. Again, when did, did the city find out from National Grid that this work w was going to need to be done? About a year and a half ago, and we still decided that this winter was the best time to be able to stop this project, because we started this project in early December, right? Just Yes, but it was a new year and a half ago. It was not a year. No. Okay, so when did when was the first open dialogue that this gas line work was going to need to be done on Ferry Street? June twenty second, we held a meeting for pre construction. We had a, me a meeting about two to three months prior for engineering staff to at least get the full understanding of the, what the city had planned to perform. As you can understand, obviously from your sides of design along with ours, we can't just have a meeting to design it overnight in terms of estimation, budget, so forth. As soon as we did hear of this project, our engineer staff got immediately on this, and as soon as I had all um, permits, documents ready to go for this job and the go-ahead from our engineering, we started this project. Unfortunately, it was December, but for us to meet the timeline of the city, uh, it needs to be done. And Mr. Mr. Cameron, or Mr. Comedy, uh, we don't typically do this work summer, fall, day, I mean, nighttime in the middle of the winter is the best time to do this work year-round. Nighttime, no matter what season it is, for the main, the main installation portion is the best time. Uh, we have discussed, once we get to a point that we won't need such a large opening, such as services, lateral main tie-ins, we'll do everything we can during the day, and we'll be reviewed as previously with the director of public works, the engineering staff, and the sergeant of police to make sure everyone is, make sure that everyone approves and is on page for the work. We have another question, just going down mm -hmm. this list. Who and when issued the permit? When was the permit issued to go forward with this project? And who was the, who was the, the permit issued by? Eleven eighteen was when the permits were signed for the first phase of this project. So it's very reasonable that it was signed on eleven eighteen. So I think it 
December, or more than December. We don't want to send out letters prior to approval permits for all residents. We want to know if I, someone with for work isn't permitted to begin. So usually we do it beforehand. Then we, we give a two weeks notice prior to let all residents with any questions or concerns personally contact myself, which my personal cell phone number is on every letter. Was the DPW or the mayor notified about the upcoming work and, or did they have any input on the project being done in the winter period? So again, was the mayor okay? Because I, I spoke to the mayor and we had a great dialogue, great conversation about this project, but was he notified? Was the DPW on board to be able to do the project? Again, in the winter time, it's a big concern to have this done in the winter time, right? We get hit like we did on Saturday night with a quick snowstorm that nobody's expecting. We have road plates out on the road. I had a project maybe five years ago down on my on my own neighborhood of Baldwin Ave, they did the street, right? They left literally 10 pieces of equipment on my street from the beginning of December until the spring because we got hit with snow one after another after another and they never came back and removed the equipment. The whole entire neighborhood was messed up for the whole winter. We weren't able to properly plow the streets. You know, if you hit a, a, a road plate that's in the middle of the street because we get you know, a surprise snowstorm, you're gonna do some serious damage to not only a truck, but to the driver that's driving that that plow so those are some of the concerns that I have is that we did this nighttime work is fine if we need to do something if it's in the middle of the summer in the middle of spring but to do it at winter time and at night is like a double negative in my opinion it's bad enough to do it overnight in the residential neighborhood but to do it at winter time is, is a double negative in my opinion yeah. so you know who who said this was a good idea did the mayor give the approval that we could go forward with this project did the city engineer did the city DPW who was in this conversation that thought this was a good idea to go forward because I personally, I personally don't think that it was in the best uh, interest of the neighborhood. Best interest of the city overall, sure, we need to get the project done, but to the neighborhood, it's a concern of mine. So who, who was in this meeting, who had these open dialogues that allowed this project to go forward, Mr. Lemon, or Mr. Cameron? Well, um, on this, you know, like most projects, um, you know, we don't specifically deal with the mayor, we deal with his staff, so, um, you know, the DPW, like, like Matt said, um, we discussed this all up front as to the best way to attack this. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is the timing uh, in terms of us being out of the way so that the, um, you know, so that the city can go, can start uh, their work as well. And I'm not sure if there were other utilities involved besides us, um, but there's just a good chunk of time here, four or five months, um, where we can, if the winter cooperates, you know, we can be out of the way and, and uh, save some extra time down the road. Sure, and again, if, if Winter incorporates a lot of things could get done, right? There could be a great year for the city of Everett and many, many, to many <coughs> projects, many like the Hancock Street sidewalks or the cleanup contamination site of the Wind Casino project. A lot of things could possibly go forward if Mother Nature works with us and doesn't give us a very snowstorm in winter like we had last year. But the fact that it can change in the blink of an eye and we can have a totally different set of circumstances is a big concern to me and it's a big concern to the residents that are negatively being impacted on their push on this part of the city. So Ruck, do you want to add something? I'd like to point out, Councillor, that uh, I understand this is being done in a particular time of year um, that it's not advantageous because of the weather. Uh, at the same time, uh, construction is being done at night with people having their windows closed, which cuts down on the noise and so on. And in, in the summertime, typically people like to open their windows, let the breeze in and so on. And if the beep, beep, beep of the construction equipment is right outside their window, I think we'd be uh, getting many more calls than we're getting right now. My understanding is we're not getting many complaints. Um, so certainly, certainly it isn't irritating to residents yeah. and they have to put up with it, but uh, they understand work has to get done uh, and they're going to benefit uh, from from potentially less leaks uh, of, this, of these gas lines. Well, I, I honestly am, am happy that you guys aren't getting the phone calls because I know that I'm getting them. I know that Councilor McKinnon is getting them. And I'm sure that all of my colleagues here are getting mm -hmm. phone calls from residents and constituents in that neighborhood that are being, again, negatively impacted on this. I have two quick questions and I'm gonna end this. Would you so mind if I just add on that point absolutely, real quickly? Absolutely. Um, I do understand the winter season. Uh, I'm very proactive and I had a schedule, but we plan for the week ahead, looking at the weather, obviously it can change. But I think this weekend was a prime example of how we handle things. No plates are left on the weekend just because it can change. I have crews on 24-7. So as this weekend showed, no equipment was left on any of the streets. All pipe, trucks, material, everything was hauled off before the winter storm hit. That would make sure there was no issues. Everything was backfilled. Paving was very checked twice during the day prior to the storm hitting us to make sure there'd be no plowing that had be having concerns to the residents. And we also do try to also help out the city when we are working projects and that so does happen. 
we do extra plowing, we do haul out, we try to stay, we try to work with the city to also be proactive and make sure it's safe for all parties. Mr. Comedy, I could not agree more with you, and I said it at the beginning of this conversation, you have been nothing but a professional, you've done nothing but accommodate the neighborhood as best as you could. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no question that you are a great asset to National Grid and to the community, and I thank you personally, because you and I have had many conversations in the past few weeks regarding this project and regarding this, this scope of work. So I, again, personally thank you for all you do for that neighborhood and for the city. I'm gonna have two questions, I'm gonna end this. Uh, Who in the city is ending for liaison? Council. I'm only asking because it's the questions I submitted to the president. So I'm coming very, very close to enforcing Rule 15, which is in-depth discussions. And I think we're getting a little bit too involved here because the other councilors do want to speak too. You, you've handled most of this conversation. I think I'm just going to ask you to take a break. Maybe we can get back to you because more than happy to, Mr. President. Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> uh, sorry, Councilor Della Sola. Okay. Hey, Owen. Um, I kind of feel your pain. I'm in the same line of work as you. Whatever source planner, the GIS map and all this. This doesn't help us as call, as call my, myself and colleagues here. I understand the map that you gave us. If this was submitted from you or from the city, I don't know if you know this, this yeah. map mm -hmm. here. A few questions I have, my colleague hit on a lot of them. I know the equipment has been removed and Devil worked, Devil worked for me plenty, many years, great contractor, probably one of the best I've had with what you have out there on Ferry Street. <coughs> Uh, the big issue is why did we have to, I know it's a big project out here. Why couldn't we wait until March to start this work? Work wouldn't be completed at time. If the work was started in March, we started in December, that's four extra months of work. We need any all time possible to complete this project on time. I'm sure, as you said, you're familiar with the work. Yeah. You can, yourself can imagine how much this can take. For any setbacks, anything at all, we wouldn't hit the deadline that we'd be in a situation as discussed previously in this meeting that you guys would be held up for us and which lead to a worse situation. Uh, this is a situation we can control. You know, if the weather does hit, we just stop. And then we wait till it's approved by the city to begin work again. Um, this work was started as soon as we had all everything in line, everything was approved by all parties to make sure we didn't hold up the city. Uh, this work is gonna be tough for the main installation portion if it's done in the summer, if it's done in December, if it's done at any time. Believe me, I wish, wish we didn't do it at all, but it's for the right, safety right, of the yeah. community and for everybody. Um, and like I said, it, this needs to be done at this time to make sure we don't hold up any of the city's work. I would like to, I got a couple of questions, President. Um, on the detours, seems to be the biggest issue. Friday night I went out to come down Ferry Street, forgot about the job going on. The detour was a, a traffic plan submitted to the city and approved when you do this work? All, for the plan for the week is all reviewed with Sergeant Bova. Um, right now, currently, say for phase one, which is Malden Line to Broadway, every night we're having two to four police details with two police cruisers. For the middle stage, we have seven police details, two police cruisers, and for four uh, on the lower portion, we have four police details, two police cruisers. We have 17, up to 17 police details at one time with six police cruisers, and anything the city requests, we certainly do have. We have multiple signs, message boards to allow all residents. And if you had problems detouring at night, I can only imagine what you had do, doing it during the day. Right. So. It's just the, the detour Friday night was just the cars are parked on the side streets, but we're being detoured to. Nobody can go north or south. We couldn't move. The cars are parked. I don't know if the residents even know when it's going to be detoured. I mean, you have a side street that you might get 20 cars all night. All of a sudden, you detour it down that street and you got 20 cars in about five minutes going down the streets and there was no place to go. Along High Street, I was trapped. I couldn't get out, I had to go out to Broadway 99, then go around it. So the detour, can we put signs up at the corners to detour the people? Because there seems to be one detour sign on Ferry Street and that take a right onto George Street and that's it. There's no other detours to direct people where to go. So if you're not from the city, you know, you're lost. I know I know where I'm going, it's in my neighborhood, but I'm lost going around the detours. Oops. So I think you just put a sign at the end of the street, take your next left, take your next right, so people know where to go. Because it was Friday night was very confusing. Additional signage is never a problem. Whatever the exactly. city would recommend and you know would like us to do, we certainly will. As many signs as you guys feel is accommodating, we will certainly have put in, put in place. And Dev will be responsible for the trench when they're done? When it's all paved and any sinkholes and 
any sinkholes, we'll be managing the trench until you guys begin your work. Um, as you saw on Friday, after we did re pick up part of our trench to repave it to make sure it was at, you know, suitable for paving, and it's something we do monitor you know, throughout the day. Okay, I have a curious question on my own side. Why did you go steel in front of Walgreens, 12-inch steel? It's 16-inch steel because replacing two gas means we wouldn't get the, the volume of gas Pressure. if we only had a 12-inch plastic line because plastic only goes to the large diameter of 12. Okay. So I to remove two leaking points. When you're doing the steel line, I was just curious. Yep. All right, thank you. Councilor McKinnon. Through you, through you, Mr. President, to uh, Mr. Cameron. Mr. Cameron, um, I just have a quick question. Was there public involvement? Was there a public meeting on this? Uh, did we do any outreach to the public surrounding uh, this project so that we could actually uh, have you know some of their input as well? Usually, I, I think, the, don't they go out and maybe have a public hearing on this or something to that effect? Well, um, no. The, oh, well, by the way, thanks for coming tonight, too, Mr. Cameron. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a little while, but thanks, thanks right. for coming. You're welcome. Um, no, this particular uh, line, because we're replacing it, wasn't uh, doesn't fall under the a category where we have to petition the city, which would cause a, uh, a require a public hearing. However, I'm going to have Matt uh, talk about the details. We did quite a bit of public outreach, you know, with mailings and so I forth. I mean, so just the, yeah. what we're getting, I mean, you can understand. Yeah. We're probably going to get some calls. We're going to yeah. get, uh, you know, people, they're up from, what is it, 7 uh, p.m. to 3 you know, a.m. They're up all night if they're hearing this stuff. Is there any way that possible that we could, uh, maybe this would be a question for you, Matt, uh, that we could actually uh, maybe do the, the certain like you know heavy equipment type stuff or the the noise uh, the noise you know problematic stuff uh, we could do that early on in the night and then come in uh, after that and try to like you know maybe quiet it down a little bit is there any way to do that or I, I'm asking you because you guys do this all the time um, to answer your first part in terms of reaching out to the community we yeah. had our headquarters send out three different letters to uh, let everyone notify the residents that this work was to come about. Did um, they notify the residents too of the, uh, not to cut you short, but of course. did they notify them of the hours it was going to be done? Yes, the hours are, as you can see, I'm going to hand this over to you, which was submitted. Okay. Um, the letter of notifications look like this. The first page lets you know the hours of work, the scope of work, how they'll be affected. The second page is a detailed project details, phase one, phase two, phase three, explanation of what they can expect during that portion of work, and along with the last page does point out two YouTube videos that we have made this year. One is what to expect during a main line replacement and a service line replacement. On that point, I also had Devro hand out a hand letter to make sure if anyone was missed through our mailings, that they would also be able to talk to the guys on site who are handing out the letters each day. We also have a door hanger that goes on with our foreman's number and my own, that they need to be set up a schedule, if they have any questions throughout, that they can reach out to us. Okay. Now, I mean, that what I'm saying is, too, is uh, we're getting noise complaints, stuff like that. Is there anything to do or anything that you guys could do to actually minimize that? We're, we're doing the best we can to minimize noise, and I, we're going to work on some different options this week to hopefully see if we can, you know, reduce the noise later in the evening. The issues is that the, what we're dealing with on Ferry Street is extremely thick, asphalt and concrete, cobblestones, railroad tracks. It's so the larger equipment is necessary, even during cleanup, just because of the scale of the work that we are performing and the amount of asphalt and requiring the crew to put back. Uh, we are gonna put the, like the whole ram and the large excavator. We're certainly trying to use only through the earlier portions of the night and try to minimize the noise later. So that's something we are gonna try to do better managing this week. Um, as, you sure we can, as you guys are, um, are sure, we are learning throughout the best way to manage this, you know, with the community and at this time and hour, and we will do our best to that's minimize what, that. that. That's what we're trying to get here. Yep. So that you know what we're looking for. We're looking for minimizing noise during the later hours of night. I mean, if this was done in front of your house, I don't think you'd be liking it either. So that's what we're looking at now. You know what I'm saying? So I know the end result is going to be a good thing, but right now these people are going through some... Uh, you know, some problems with the noise and stuff like that. So if there's any way that we can minimize it, is there any way that we could do something to that effect? We'd like to hear that from you. So I'll leave it up to my colleague here. Uh, maybe he can actually meet up with you again at some point or have phone conversation, whatever. It seems like there's a dialogue between you two now. So uh, that might be the route to go. But uh, that would probably be the way I would look at it. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Piro. I'll be very brief. I know this has been a lengthy discussion. I just wanted to comment. I was on site Friday night, about 10 o'clock, the crew closest to Malden. They were great getting things wrapped up for the storm. They were out of there by, I want to say, 10, 30, 11, maybe Friday night in preparation. Everything was clean. 
spotless in uh, just on a second note uh, to my colleagues. I think in the future something like this should really be dealt with in government operations and public safety committee. This is a very lengthy discussion and I think that's the right place for it. Thank you. Councilman McLaughlin, let's wrap this up. Mr. President, I'm actually going to take the advice of my good colleague from Ward 3 and ask to make a motion to send this to government operations. I didn't realize this was going to open up to such a dialogue. I've come up with a whole entire another list of questions that I'd like to have answered from this conversation tonight. So my colleague suggested that it goes into committee. I think he's right. I think to not have any more discussion on this. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion for that. Second you have a list of questions? Do I have another list of questions? I will submit them in pro appropriate amount of time as I did previously. Well, remember, we have to have them seven days before they were invited to the meeting. I that is, seven days that, that the is meeting. correct, although that, that's fine. I, that's correct. Yes. All right. I, I do believe that the charter states that that is for council meetings and not committee meetings, but that's okay. Well, I'll submit them before the committee meeting. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? We discussed the gentleman with the customary thanks. Thank you very much for appearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On the motion uh, that we refer this to government operations, we have a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. You have referred to government operations. That make was a motion, item number uh, 20. 20 uh, make a motion to uh, suspend the rules. Take item 21, please. Uh, motion made second to uh, suspend the rules and take item number 21 from the calendar. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All opposed, say aye. The ayes have it. Item 21, the clerk will please read. Uh, item number 21 is a resolution sponsored by Councilor Leo McKinney and the entire City Council. City Council put the second annual 5K run walk supporting Everett families living with autism and sponsored by the FSI Foundation for Autism Incorporated. Councilor McKinney. Uh, I, I see Mr. Coyle in the audience. Uh, could I have him before us? Where, is he here? Yeah, Mr. No. Coyle. Okay. Uh, motion made a second to invite the gentleman before us. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Please come forward, sir. Good evening, everyone. Please identify yourself. My name is Sean Coyle. I'm the executive director for the uh, FSI Foundation for Autism. Is that your manager with you? This is my son, Shane. Okay. Yes. My name is Shane. Thank you. Uh, I'm 15 years old. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Coyle, uh, just a quick question, uh, 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 maybe a brief overview. You gave us a, um, it was a, uh, a handout <coughs> of uh, the, the, everything that you did last year. This is going to be the second one. Last yes, year when it, uh, it all went according to plan. I'm assuming it was a great time. I was there. I know it was a great time. There was a lot of members here that were at at the event. Uh, we're looking forward to having a great event this year. We just would like the city council's approval on uh, the date, which would be May first, uh, which is a Sunday, uh, 2016. It was held on a Sunday this uh, past year. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. And that worked out fine. That worked out great. We, you know, really had a successful event. Uh, safety was the first issue. Yeah. Uh, the Everett Police Department did a fine job um, coordinating the, the whole race with all the runners. All right, and um, let me see. Uh, to date, uh, you've been helping families in the city of Everett, correct? Yes, if you look through the pamphlet, there is uh, three families. There has been four families that have received grants uh, we do have uh, four more families that we're reviewing right now um, that will probably receive the grant also this, you know, within the next month. And we've been posting it in the every paper, um, the families that have been receiving the grant this money. This has also been online? Yes, we, we have, have the, website. we have a website, uh, WWFSI for the number four autism.org. And we do have the profit and loss statement up there, and also some of the families, donors, uh, local businesses that have helped us out, which has been really great. A lot of people have been supportive here in Everett. And we had a lot of people from the surrounding communities. If you look in the pamphlet, it's pretty amazing to see how many people came here to Everett to support our Everett families living with autism. Um, I have no further questions. I'll be supporting this. I want to 
say I apologize for the lengthy discussion prior, but uh, oh, that's quite all right. Uh, that's quite all right. Any further? Huh? Any further questions or discussion? Uh, yes, Councilman Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to commend uh, this gentleman. He's a businessman, as we all know, in this city. A wonderful father, as you can clearly see. Uh, it's people like you that make this city the city that it is. You're concerned. You. You're a homeowner here. I've known you for over 15, 20 years. You're a great guy, and I know you have the La Montaigne family with you. Yeah, Go another, another great ever family. Yes. And we appreciate that. But if there's anything that we can do, is there any suggestion? I know that it costs you some money to run this event. Yes. And uh, is there any way that the city council can help you maybe defer some of these costs? I know that you pay a lot for the police. Is that? Yes, we, 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 did, we did. We had 13 officers that we employed that day for the 13. event. And how much did that come to? Um, I have right here the profit and loss. Uh, Expenses, police detail, $2,388. That's a lot of money. And I, I know that there's a union rules, Mr. President, that yeah. guide some of these uh, events that you have to have pay details and so forth. But Yes. You know, that's a lot of money. Uh, what other uh, expenditures this, did, did the city cost? Uh, um, that was, you know, the public works, we did a great job. I mean, they, they helped uh, with the Everett Police Department. Um, you know, throughout the event. Uh, there was other several costs with timing, equipment, T-shirts, you know, it, it basically it costs roughly around $10,000, 10 to $11,000 to host the event. I mean, I'm hoping this year, last year was the first year, we're hoping this year that we'll be able to talk to some of the business, we might be able to cut that cost down. That's what, that's what the hope is, is to really go out and have the Everett community, the local businesses help us uh, many, many people in Everett through the canning event that we do do in April. Uh, the, the community is just, it's overwhelming, the support they do give us out on the street when we do a canning drive. So we're hoping to defer some of the costs with that, uh, you know, and put it as one package for the Ferry Street, um, the, well, the FSI Foundation grants. Well, if there's anything you know. that we can do as a city council, as you notice Council McKinnon put the entire city council, which yes. is every one of us here, we support you, and if there's Thank anything you. that we can do to help promote this event uh, in any way, please let us know and let me know. I see you on a regular basis anyway. And keep up the great work. It's good to Thank see you. your son Shane so helpful in the, uh, this organization. Thank you. And welcome yeah. to City Hall tonight. All right. Thank you. Council Delasola. I just want to echo, echo the words of my colleague. Uh, it was a great event. I ran it myself. Yes. It was a good time. Um, it was great seeing you come across the line there. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> easy. It, 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 Frankie it, Park, if you're out there, I'm challenging you again this year. Rebel legs. And <laughs> just a shout out to all the businesses in Everett, all the residents. If yes. you see the canning or you want to give a donation, go online. Any amount helps. I just want to make a shout out on that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you for the discussion. Gentlemen, you are excused. Pardon? Oh, excuse me, the customer. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Councilman yeah, I, I just wanted to say this was a great event. Uh, I, I, I helped with it last year, and uh, I hope it goes over as well again this year, and I hope that we can all get involved with it. Um, and yes. also, uh, I'd like to ask for favorable action. Excuse the customer. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for coming up tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to have Thank both you. of you here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to run up this year. I'm going to beat you. Rubber legs. Council? Favorable action? On. Oh. Just, it's uh, just uh, yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Council. That the council support. Favorable action that the council support this. Okay, so, uh, okay, thank you for the motion. Motion made and second for council support. All in favor signify by saying aye. All aye. 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 Tab it. Thank you. Okay.
clerk will read item number one. Item number one, communicate, uh, no, yeah, order, sponsored by Councilor John F. Hanlon as president to transfer and appropriate $130,000 from budgetary fund balance into Mount Washington Street wall account. This is for additional work needed beyond the scope of the bid that was currently received. Councilor Minnelli. Uh, this, is, this, this is a non-debatable order. Uh, no. You have two choices this evening. You can either refer it to the next meeting or you can refer it to Ways and Means Committee. There's the only two things you can do with all of these. I make a motion to refer it to the next oh, meeting. Wait, wait, Councilor Simonelli. It is money well spent. Uh, the people upon the hill have been putting up with this problem for a long time, and we hope that this money will fix the problem once and for all. Okay, thank you. Although that is a debatable uh, word, we're not supposed to do that, so uh, Council DeFlorio. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I know that our charter says we either have to wait for the next meeting or send it to committee. Where this is self-explanatory, that's why I made the recommendation of uh, sending it to the next uh, meeting. Next, refer to the next meeting. Councilor McLaughlin. I, I'm okay with sending it, referring it to the next meeting. I do have a couple of questions on the issue, so I, I would uh, concur with my colleague from Ward 5 that we send it to the next yeah. meeting. Well, the non-debatable, just either pass it or, or, I mean, not pass it, either refer it to the committee. Make a motion to refer, refer to, to the, the next meeting. meeting. Okay. Rosa, next meeting? Yes. Okay. I, uh, Council Matuski first. I just have a question. Um, I, I don't understand. If we, if we voted on this tonight, favorable. Can't. You can't, okay. When can you actually speak about the uh, item? You can't, it's, not, it's in our rules. Our you don't rules speak about uh, spending $130,000? It's in the chat, sorry, it's in the chat. Either refer speak it to the committee or refer it to next meeting. Next at the meeting. next meeting we speak. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh -huh. Next oh, meeting, I see. Yeah. So it, this is like a rehearsal for the piece. So, right. Kind of. Okay, thank you. If, if, if I may. Council Capone. Um, we, we can speak on it, we just can't take a, a final vote on it. Right. So if the council, you have to suspend the rules in order to speak on it. But if we suspended the rules, you could speak on it. Uh, I too have some questions. Uh, so if it's the will of the body to lay it over the table to the next meeting, I'd like to make sure that we invite the proper people up there to get our questions answered. One of them being uh, probably the city auditor and maybe someone from the engineer's department. Auditor and who? Uh, engineer's department. Council McLaughlin. Mr. Mr. President, again, I, uh, I apologize. I actually think that sending this to the Ways and Means Committee because we don't have, want to have an open, lengthy discussion on a matter like this that could uh, develop into something like happened tonight. So I'm putting it into committee and being able to discuss it in committee so that we save time on the floor. So I'd make a motion actually to send this to the Ways and Means Committee so that we can have the open dialogue that is needed on this okay. piece. I need a second. I just want to say something. Councilor Matuski? Okay, there we go. You know, I was just concerned as to when you can actually speak on any particular item. I, I'm not, I agree with Councilman Simonelli, the, the wall should be repaired, but I was just uh, looking for information. So the next meeting, you could actually talk on this. Either the next meeting or the committee, I don't know which yet. But okay, I have no fine. second on That's, That was my only question on, on the matter. I have no second on to the uh, Committee of Ways and Means, so therefore the motion to uh, refer it to our next meeting no further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. It is referred to, uh, item one is referred to, uh, to the next meeting. Item two. Item number two is an order sponsored by Council John F. Handler's president that the sum of $1,038,988 be transferred and appropriated from budgetary fund balance into the capital improvement stabilization fund. The appropriation is, followed, is following the parameters set forth under the city's financial reserve policy. Same rules, folks. Make a motion to send it to committee. Ways and means. Ways and means. Yeah. I need a second. 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 Motion made and seconded. Refer to the committee on ways and means. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Refer it to ways and means. Clerk read item three. Item number three is an order sponsored by Council John F. Hanlon, President, that the sum of $779,241 be transferred and appropriated from budgetary fund balance into the stabilization fund. This appropriation is following the parameters set forth under the city's financial reserve policies. Motion to refer to ways and means. We have a second. second. Motion made and second to refer to ways and means. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. We have referred to ways and means. 
Item number four is an order sponsored by Council John of Handler's president. The sum of $779,241 be transferred and appropriated from budgetary fund balance in, uh, into the other post employment benefits liability trust fund account. This appropriation is following the premise set forth under the city's financial reserve policies. Motion to speak for it. Any second? Uh, on the motion, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, all the stuff that we're referring to ways and means, we do need to invite people up, is that correct? Yes, uh, the proper people. We will, we will get So, uh, in, I was just going to say, would, the, would you please invite the proper yeah. uh, people up? Thank you. So would it be the, uh, the president on the motion? Normal people, yes. I still only have a motion. I don't have a second yet. Yes, Michael. I'm sorry, Councilor McLaughlin. Mr. President, on the motion. We're sending all these items to committee, to Ways and Means. That's why I thought item one would be most appropriate. Who's going to submit these questions? You guys want the questions seven days before our committee meeting. Who's going to submit questions on all of these items that I was asked to do tonight and I'm asked to do for public safety? Well, I don't week? know, but I was, when we get to the bottom, I was going to ask. Okay, thank you. One. Okay, so we still have a um, motion to refer to and second, thank you very much. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor referring to ways and means signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed say nay, the, aye, nay, the ayes have it. Item number five. Item number five is an order sponsored by Council John of Handler's president. The sum of 26,000 be transferred from the following accounts into the police department's account as followed. Administrative vehicles, $4,082. Bucket truck, $325. F550 hot box $3,190, chipper truck $10,296, Bobcat $6,127, vehicles $1,980. This transfer will fund the purchase of a new vehicle for the animal control officer. Councilman, uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. President. This seems, again, like the, uh, the wall piece. It seems self explanatory. It's saying it's going to the animal control officer, so I don't believe it needs to go into ways and means and have a lengthy discussion. So I just uh, uh, refer it to the, uh, the next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Yeah, Motion to refer this item to the next meeting of the council, Councilman McLaughlin. I'm all set, thanks, Mr. President. Okay. I need a second? A second. I'll make a motion made in a second to refer this to the committee on, I'm sorry, committee of the next meeting. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? I'm sorry, I got Councilman Matuski first. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just have a question uh, to the chair. Uh, I've received information regarding this piece in the mail. Uh, like most of us probably have, right? I know. Uh, this item number five. Yep. Why would we normally, you know, if we got information, say, on any one of these pieces, uh, why are we sending it to the Ways and Means Committee? I, I don't it's, get it's that. It's part of our rule. <laughs> so number five is exempt from that rule. Yeah, anything right? transferred, any money, any money. It has to be goes to a committee. No. Yeah, it has to go to why just one no. The charter? Sorry, committee on next next meeting. One or the other. Oh, it's delayed one, one meeting. Right. So this one we want to go to the next meeting. So evidently these first four pieces, I'm just trying to get this straight. I know sure. I've been out of here for about a, a year. Uh, <laughs> and things have changed, but I just want to get it straight. So the other four pieces, somebody wanted to send them, made a motion to send them to committee because they have questions on it. Am I correct? All right, hold. I'm going to ask the counselor. I mean, I'm sorry, our... our, our Clerk to explain these these two motions of referring, uh, are, uh, referring to committee or are referring to the okay. next meeting. I have the <clears throat> I have the advantage of having the charter in front of me. So, what our charter says is that no measure that's considered non-routine. What's routine? A lot of the resolutions are routine, so they can be voted on finally that evening. If something is uh, considered non-routine, you can't pass it finally that night. And since an order only takes one vote, it's gotta be either referred to the next meeting or sent to committee. And a good example is that I asked the chief of staff about the transfers in number five. If that was transfers within the police department, that probably could have been voted on tonight as routine because it's just the police department transferring money within their own accounts. So we could have. But since it's coming from other departments, that's kind of not routine and, and would take, I believe, eight votes to pass. Am, am I right? Yeah, two thirds. So that makes it not routine. So it just means you can't vote on it finally that night. And like an, ord an ordinance only needs two readings now because there's only one branch, you couldn't, um, you know, you couldn't vote for it twice 
you well, know, in that one meeting in, in fact. Okay, you know, but uh, I thought the chat, I, you know, maybe I'm yeah. a little bit, you know, not informed as to what everything is that's in the chat, was to streamline some of these uh, orders and so forth so that you're not bogging down committees. I, 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 this used to be the big argument. Everybody's sending everything to committee. Now, all of a sudden, it has to go to committee, or you just lay it over for a week. I can understand that. Yeah. Um, to get more information, maybe, or whatever, but to ask all of these department heads and so forth to come to a meeting uh, where they could just send you a uh, communication, like they did in item number five, I don't think I got anything from this other group. But, I mean, technically, wouldn't that be enough to... Uh, Explain what the expenditure for, is for you next for the next meeting. Yes, absolutely. But be it because, only takes be, because you don't have that checks and balances, and, and I'm sorry, Mr. President, sorry. If, I'm, if I'm going beyond. But uh, because you don't have that second branch that bought you that extra time. Oh, see, there, there was think, some good in that yeah, system oh, too. And but. so what happens is they <laughs> give you the extra time with that extra week. The check and balance. I understand and that. Yeah. All, and since you also have to give questions ahead of time. You, you also would have to lay it over for at least a week anyhow. And the other question I have, Mr. President, to the clerk is, uh, is it a majority vote if, say, a majority of the councils that are here didn't want to send it to committee and just lay it over to the next meeting in which it, case? It works the opposite. If something was... Does it take one member to make that motion? Yeah. If the president determines something to be not routine, it only works for something determined not, I'm sorry, something routine. If the president should say this is a routine matter and one person objects, then it would be considered not routine and either sent to committee or laid over. But it doesn't work the opposite. Okay. You can't well, thank you for clearing that up. Thank you. All righty. So where are we? We're still on item number five, right? We haven't done item five yet, Mike? Right, we're still on item five. Yep. Yes. Council McKenna. Will you, Mr. President, to the clerk. Um, and, and the same motion, if we're sending things to the committees, yes. these specific committees, why are we having um, the seven questions, uh, seven, you know, or ten? Seven days for the questions. But it's questions. That right, there's one thing you have to. I mean, yeah. that's why I'm sending it to the committee. I have a whole load of questions, right. and I don't want to debate on the floor, so I'm going to get time so I can send it to the committee. Correct? Right. Okay. You send them those, those questions ahead of time, and they will answer them in committee. As you saw today, everybody was really prepared with, with their answers. And, and I, Why not just do it on the floor, then? If we could do everything on the floor, then. I mean, if we're going to have to submit questions to get right. it into committee, well, we could do it right on the floor. Because in committee, you don't have to stick to just those questions. You do have to stick to just that subject. But follow-up questions. If I have questions upon questions in committee, that's what I'm asking them. Exactly. So, I mean, that, for me, yeah. for me, it, it for me to submit, you know, several, for, but through, through you, Mr. President, mm -hmm. just to, to ask the question. If I have several questions that I want to answer, and then I have several more in committee, I'm asking them. I'm not going to just yeah, sit there, you know. Oh, you know, oh no, and you yeah, can, as long as it's on the same subject what those questions do mm -hmm. is give the person appearing before you a chance to prepare for the meeting by saying, this is the basic gist. You're not asking them absolutely every question you're going to ask them. Sure. It's, these are the basic things I want to know. So, so when my, is this going to be done? How much exactly. is it going to cost? My point is on this, though, uh, mm -hmm. to the city clerk, is that if we're doing that in committee, we're doing it on the floor. We're doing it both both ways. It's I not mean, supposed to happen on the floor. It, it shouldn't happen on the floor. The floor is only for up or down votes on, on legislation okay. and on orders. All right. I, I mean, just so that as, we have as, uh, uh, What I'm trying to do is get clarity right. here. As Council Matuska can tell you, when the House of Representatives, nobody appears in that chamber and have the Secretary of State appear and answer 5,000 questions. Sure. It's done in committee. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's where it's done. And, and that's, um, that's where most of this will be done. In that's committee. right. Okay. But you do not have to stick to the questions you've submitted. That gives the person a chance, and, and I think the council did a good job at Just that. to get a just of it. And okay. I think you saw the result of it. They were able to So, I mean, it. we could submit one or two questions and then ask an array of questions in committee, correct? As long as you've given them a really good, and you stick to the subject. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> That's okay. We still have a straight 
Right. right. Okay. On item number five, the was referred to the next meeting. Next council. meeting of the council, and we have a, a motion and we have a second on it. Any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. 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 All opposed. You have referred to the next meeting. President. Yes. But the, I did talk with the city clerk just before the meeting, and uh, items six through, I believe, 17 mm -hmm. are all renewals. Uh, there's no issues with any of them, according to the city clerk. Um, nothing outstanding, nothing nothing out, out of the ordinary. So I would like to have the motion is taken all as one, um, read them separately, but um, take six through 17 collectively. All right. Motion made to take. Thank you. Motion made to take items 6 through 17 collectively, um, seconded by Councilor DeFlorio. Any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, so moved. Item 6 through 17 is before you. Uh, item number 6 is a lodging house license for Prescott House, 36 Church Street. 7 is lodging house backpackers hostel, 13 School Street. Eight is first and second class motor deal license from Honda Cars of Boston, 100 Broadway. Nine is the second class motor deal license out of Check Pro Incorporated DBA Main Street Car Sales, 146 Main Street. Ten is second class motor deal license of Crimson Auto Sales LLC, 163 Ferry. Eleven is second class motor deal license Inman Motor Sales of Somerville at 1760 Revere Beach Parkway. Number twelve is uh, second class motor deal license Crusoe Automotive, 49 Robin Street. 13, second class motor deal license, Summit Management Group, 138 Spring. 14, second class motor deal license, Boston Auto Brokers, 353 Third Street. Number 15, redemption center license, Dan's Redemption, 107 Hancock. 16, auto body repair license, Broadway Gas and Service, 356 Broadway. Item number 17, second class motor deal license, Glendale Gas and Service, 725 Broadway. Table action on the audit. Motion made and second for favorable action on item six through 17. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by, by, by saying aye. 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 All, uh, roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, you're roll call. Uh, Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Solo. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePero. Yes. Council Mangan. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Palatano. Council Simonelli. Councilor Hanley. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. You have granted all the petitions. Thank you. Item 18. Item number 18, Mr. President, resolution sponsored by Councilor Anthony DePiro of the city consider installing a barrier along the section of Horace Mann Playground parking lot that is adjacent to Foster Street as a safety precaution. Councilor DePiro. Yes, I want to thank Mr. Souza from Planning and Development. He provided us, I think all of us, with a memo of the work being done and they are indeed going to be putting a barrier to prevent cars from uh, going over that lot once again. So just want to thank him and refer this back to sponsor. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Motion has passed. We're on item 22, I believe. I'm known 22, Mr. President, is resolution sponsored by Councilor John Lee McKinney for uh, resolution for a total compilation of work appears down on Ashton Street, Cumberland Streets, with time frame for total completion on both streets. Re Refer this to the Committee on Government Operations. Second. Second. If, I, if I may ask one question, is that, do you have a date on that total compilation? We don't want to go back to 1804. No, so um, actually it would be just on this job. <laughs> the I, I, what I'll do is, um, uh, pretty much the body of the wording here is asking the three questions that I want. So what I'll do is just submit the three questions and ask for the job that's at hand now. Second. On the motion to refer? Motion Government operation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Did you have some questions? No, okay. All, uh, all opposed? The ayes have it. Item 23. Item number 23, order sponsored by Council Anthony DePero, Fred Capone, Rosa DeFlorio, Michael Mangan, Mike, Michael McLaughlin, Leo McKinnon, that pursuant to Council 38, the City Council established a special committee consisting of four members to be selected by the president to explore what other cities and towns are doing to address the opioid, opioid epidemic and to make suggestions that will enable our city to fight addiction in an intelligent, proactive, and effective manner. Councilor DePiro. Uh, we talked about this a bit at the last meeting. It's something that I feel is very needed in the city. I said there's no need to reinvent the wheel with different programs going on uh, in neighboring cities and throughout the state. I think this committee is needed to see what's being done, what's working, and we need to implement it 
here in Everett. And uh, I also want to thank Councilor Capone. We went back and forth on the language with this piece. And uh, I think it's something that, that is very needed. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Capone, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to my colleague, you're very welcome. Anytime, I'm willing to help. Uh, on this piece, it's, uh, it's a very important issue, as we're all aware. It has, uh, it has touched lives at many levels. Uh, you see it even in campaigns at the presidential level. It's being discussed. So from ground level in local communities all the way up nationally, uh, and you dare say internationally, it's a, um, a very important piece. We've had uh, tremendous uh, community involvement, ever to overcoming addiction. Uh, this, I think, will, will help them, uh, help all of us collectively work to try to get help for those folks that need it and try to find a way to uh, bring this, this problem under control and someday hopefully defeat it. So I wholeheartedly second the motion. Okay, motion made and second. Uh, okay, uh, Council McKenna. Uh, very brief. Uh, we, uh, uh, us three, uh, my two colleagues, Myself, we were at the uh, Everett Overcoming Addiction tonight. Uh, they had a Narcan training program that was uh, very, very useful and very, very helpful. It could save lives in our community. Uh, I think um, what we have to do is we have to get that message out there as, as much as possible. And the training that's uh, available to these people that are in this city, they need to actually take a look at that and they need to go and actually be trained with this. Uh, it was good training. Uh, the woman that was speaking on it was very informative, and I think that we need to actually, you know, expose that to the people within our city so that they can actually, some of them could be saved uh, just by this simple thing. So, and that's the message that I was getting there tonight. Uh, they're going to be having additional training on this, so uh, as soon as that comes forward, I'm sure that my colleagues or I will come forward and ask that that be produced before ECTV and we can actually have that go out to the whole city as an entirety. So uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, this great piece and uh, that hopefully we can get more of this message out there for the community. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could just make a mention, the items that were just passed out to you come from the Mass Municipal Association. It's all about the subject matter at hand. Uh, it would be nice if you would read it and, and I think that it's well done. I, the governor was 100% behind this as he spoke on it, so did the Lieutenant Governor, so did the Chairman of the Mass Municipal Association, so did the Chairman of the Massachusetts Clerk, uh, I'm sorry, Council's Association. They all spoke on it. Everybody is in favor of getting something done in this, and everybody is jumping on board, and I'm glad to see that this Council is ready to go on it. Councilor uh, Mangan. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I want to commend my colleague uh, from Ward 3, uh, Council DePiro. Um, only one, um, this is, as people know, this is his. Uh, uh, first order that he's actually passed, whatever, and I don't, I mean, what a special thing for, especially the, you know, the importance of this to be his first order and getting it passed, which I believe it's gonna pass tonight. So I just want to commend him, and as usually is, it's customary when somebody passes their order for, for the first time in city government, you give them a round of applause, so I'd like to uh, congratulate Council that day. I know it's premature, but I believe it, uh, people will vote in favor of him, so I just want to commend him and congratulate him. Dinner's on him tonight. Motion favorable action. The clerk call the roll. Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Solo. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiero. Yes. Council Mangan. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council Hamlin. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Ten yeas, zero nays. I will be in touch. I'm 24. If we could, the next three pieces, I believe are all going to, they say to go to public safety and public service, may, may, may government operations. It's possible to make a recommendation to take 24, 25, 26 collectively, just have the clerk read it and refer, and refer them to the uh, respective committees. Respective, uh, okay. <coughs> made and set to refer to respective committees, items 24, 25, and 26. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Sure. Sure.
like to point out that all of these all have their questions built into it, so which, which is good, and this is what we should be doing. So that was all in favor, and it had passed. So we'll look read the next item. Twenty-seven. I'm number twenty-seven. Resolution sponsored by Council Wayne Matuski, represented from National Agree up here next meeting in February, relative to the ongoing issues with street lights at various locations throughout the city for months. Council Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Mr. Cameron, who was here on other matters tonight, and uh, you know my issues uh, was concerning Revere Beach Parkway. There's a lot more pedestrian traffic. Um, I'll use uh, landmarks, for instance, near the Silver Fox, uh, Richie Slush. Uh, people are actually walking on the parkway now. They've actually fixed some sidewalks last year and some crosswalks in that area. But we've got two lights that have been hit by a truck, one four years ago and hasn't been put back up. Right after Craftsman's Glass, there's a cone there. And uh, up until the cone, which has only been placed there about a year ago, it was just this bolt thing sticking out of the ground. And um, the other one was hit about five months ago, and that's got a cone on it too. And they actually did fix the street light at the corner of Lewis and uh, the parkway. But I noticed tonight, I just, they must have fixed it today. Uh, the light is very dim. I don't know if they, they got a bad pallet of lights. Uh, do you remember that debacle a few years ago? I thought it was my eyesight, the bulbs were blinking and so forth all over the city. And one day they'd be on, the next day they were off. And Mr. Cameron finally did say that they got a bad pallet of light bulbs. Okay. So uh, with that, I'll refer this back to sponsor. He is making efforts to fix lights. And I guess they're still in charge of all street lights in the city, uh, National Grid, uh, it's my understanding. We own the poles now, but the National Grid has to fix them. So. Uh, I have his direct number now, and that other gentleman that was here, I have his card. I think we're, we're going to be able to solve some lighting problems in the city in the future. So I'd like to refer that back to sponsor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the motion, uh, did you have anything you want to say? Yes, Congress I just have a comment uh, through you, Mr. President. I did speak to uh, Mr. Sapino from the mayor's office, and I don't know a lot of details on it, but I would encourage you to get in touch with him, uh, something in regards to the city eventually taking over a lot of those lights and uh, replacing them with nice LED lighting and, uh, to really uh, in increase the appearance of them. Okay. So on the motion, refer back to sponsor. All in favor? Aye. 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 So move your referred back to sponsor. Item number 29. Item number 29, resolution sponsored by Council Fred Capone that a representative from the City Services Department appear at our next council meeting to discuss hot top replacement and cement sidewalks after contractors have performed work. This is Evan along Bow Street and other locations throughout the city. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we've probably all seen it as you went around the city campaigning. Uh, sidewalk work has been done and instead of pouring cement, we get hot top and you know the city goes through the effort and the expense of putting sidewalks together and then some work is done and then it hot top and it never turns back to cement uh, so I've noticed it on Bow Street I've noticed it throughout the city so what I'd like to do is I'd like to refer this to uh, the Committee on Government Operations Public Service Public Safety invite a representative from City Services and someone from the engineer's office second Who may second? Oh, second. Okay. Uh, Councilor Della Sola. Yeah, I'll hold my questions till next meeting. Okay. Okay. Yes. Motion made and second. Refer to government uh, operations. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Signify aye. by saying aye. All opposed? Aye. Has it? So we have referred to government operations. Item 29. Item 30, please. Item number 30, that a representative from the City Services Department and City Engineer appear at our next council meeting to discuss a continuously defunct crossing light at the intersection of Broadway and 2nd Street. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. This, uh, this is a light that continuously gets run over. <laughs> 18 wheelers try and take the turn on the 2nd Street, and it just, it just isn't made for that. Uh, this, this is the portion of 2nd Street between Broadway and the Parkway. Uh, I've discussed it with Traffic Commission. It involves state regulation. There may be something we can do locally with the engineers department for safety but i would like to refer this as well to government operations 
and I'd like to invite the same two, City Services and Engineer's Office. Councilor, those poles, those are light poles? It's, uh, it's actually the, the pole that you, uh, crossing light. It's okay. a crossing light. And I've, I've witnessed it a number of times. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the base of it is, now has a cone on it, but it's been run over so many times that the actual base itself rocks. It, it, there's nothing there to connect to. It's not funny, but you no. know, okay. So motion to refer this to uh, government operations. On second? second. All, in all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, so moved. Refer to government operations. Item 31. If we could, um, 31, 32, and 33 all have going into government safety, government operations. So I'd like to make a motion to take them collectively and send them to the, uh, the respective department, I mean, the respective committee. Okay. Uh, 31, 2, and 3? Yep. 1, 2, 31, 32, and 33. Okay. A motion made and second to refer it uh, collectively. All in no. favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Clerk will read the Item number 31, Council Michael J. McLaughlin, Council Richard Dallasolder. Della Sola to ask DPW director to appear before the next government operations public safety public service meeting to talk about the upcoming snow season and steps to be taken to keep our city safety including fire hydro markers I have the exact same one for item number 32 I don't know what everyone else has that, that's correct okay item number 33 is a resolution so I'm like Council Michael J. McLaughlin to invite Chief of Police to a March meeting of Government Operations, Public Safety, Public Service for an update regarding steps being taken before the opening uh, of Win Everett. Okay. Oh, so it's actually only two? Yes. In, in regards to the, uh, these pieces all going to committee, mm. we do have to invite the sponsor also. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I just want to make that clear. Because Our I, representative. Uh, Our rep, yes. Okay. okay. Council McLaughlin. Mr. Chairman, on the motion, I apologize. I, uh, I'd like to try to amend item number 33 by adding the entire city council to item 33. I've spoken with all of my colleagues regarding this matter, and I, I would like to make a motion to, I was going to say it if I spoke on the piece, to amend this by adding the entire city council to this item. I, I apologize, Mr. President, I misspoke. It's item 34, not 33, okay. I apologize. I was reading the calendar wrong with the, miss, the second piece. So it's item number 34, okay, okay, so uh, items, uh, 31, 32, and 33. All in favor? Aye. All referral? So passed. Item 34. Item number 34, resolution sponsored by Council Michael J. McLaughlin to invite member of Winnever and also Suffolk Construction to the first committee of the whole meeting in March for an update on the project. Okay, and let me see, who can I ask? Does anyone want to talk in this matter? Was there anyone that raised their hand? Uh, oh, was it you, Council McLaughlin? No, Mr. President, I'm just going to go home for the night, no problem. <laughs> Council McLaughlin. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, on the motion, I'd like to sus uh, suspend the rules and ask if we can make this uh, entire city council. I think this is an important item that uh, all of the colleagues of mine have questions and would like to get an update. There's so much happening at the site of the casino project. It's an exciting time for the community. I think we should all have a dialogue, so I'd like to send this to Committee of the Whole. Yeah, you can call Committee of the Whole anytime. I think he's, you are asking for a committee of the whole, right? Yes, you are asking for it. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Motion to refer to the uh, uh, meeting of, uh, is it March 1st? That's a Monday? March, March 8th? March, uh, I'm sorry, February 8th. March, uh, February 8th? As amended. Whole meeting. As amended, Mr. President. As, as amended. amended. As amended. All in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Mr. President. February 8th. Yes, sir. I know we have it on the, the, the bottom of our calendar, but just for, for the people at home that are watching, um, next Monday night at 6 p.m., held in, in, the, in this council chambers, um, there'll be a win, um, a, a, a meeting on what's going on down there also, too. It's called a phase two meeting, but um, when we'll be hosting it at 6 p.m., so I, uh, I ask that the residents come out and, um, you know, if they have any questions or anything, certainly, but it's next Monday night, February 1st at 6 p.m., uh, held in this, these council chambers. Okay. Motion is second to adjourn. All in favor? All opposed? We have adjourned. Council McLaughlin. <laughs>